Yo, how did Aunt Becky go from the full house to the big house? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? <laughs> huh? All right, welcome to Tate's Take. If you're new here, I do spoiler-free movie and TV reviews. Give you a little background, based on if I think it's worth checking out or not. If that's something you're into, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for your boy. For my regular Tate's Takers, let's see if this new Netflix documentary passes the test. Get it? Because it's about like school and cheating? Ugh, never mind. All right, quick background here. Operation Varsity Blues, The College Admission Scandal is a new Netflix documentary about the college admission scandal. It was created by Chris Smith and John Carmen, and those are the two dudes who made the Fire Festival documentary. It's also from the same executive producers who brought us the documentary that saved 2020, Tiger King. Operation Varsity Blues is the documentary, but in a unique way, because it uses actors to tell the story, which normally could be pretty cheesy. But here it's different, because the actors don't have lines. Though well, the lines aren't scripted. It's from actual conversations that the feds got from tapping their phones. The main actor here is Matthew Modine, who plays the ringleader, Rick Singer. You would have seen him in a whole bunch of other movies and TV shows, but most importantly, he's the cop in Dark Knight Rises that was too scared to come outside when Bane took over the city because he ain't built like that. Anyway, the documentary is feature length, just one part, about an hour and 40 minutes, and includes these reenactments with the actors and also some traditional documentary stuff like interviews with some real life figures, as well as old news footage. Let's get into it. All right, plot time. Operation Varsity Blues recounts the events that came to light in 2019. Everyone knows some part of the story because it involves Aunt Becky from the Full House. And to be honest, I don't know much more beyond that. Realistically, they had me at Aunt Becky. But it was actually much bigger than that because over 50 people got indicted. The documentary tells a whole in-depth story from the beginning and it all centers around this dude named William Rick Singer. An FBI investigation called Operation Varsity Blues. USC, UCLA, and Rick Singer. The mastermind behind the entire operation. Is there any risk that this thing blows up in my face? Rick Singer went to college in San Antonio back in the 80s. He was really big into sports and shortly after that started coaching high school basketball. Apparently he was like the Bobby Knight of high school because he would be kicking and screaming at the players. Real toxic like. After the team finished like 4-24, and 24, they fired the whole coaching staff. Duh. That's when he decided to go into college counseling. Of course, working with all these high school athletes, he started learning the ins and outs of college admissions. Mm. Fast forward to 2011 which is the beginning of this situation at hand. Now Rick has this huge network of school, athletics, and admissions people so he could really start making some magic happen. A lot of the times, these parents will hit up Rick to get their kids into schools that they can never get into. It's like they're going to school through their kids. You know, it's like when the dad couldn't get into the NBA, so he starts coaching his kid extra hard. It's like that. The kids often didn't have the grades, the test scores, or the extracurricular activities to get in on their own, so they will call Rick. In the college acceptance system, Rick described getting entry into these top schools as having three doors, and this is important. The front door, and this one's a little controversial, but hear me out. This is the one where you do your homework, study for the SAT, get your freaking service hours, and you get in on merit. I know, I know, it's, it's a crazy concept. It's very cutting edge. There's the back door, where you write a check to the school for about 10 to $20 million, but get this, you're not even guaranteed to get in. They just say they'll take another look at it. Can you imagine paying $10 million to sneak your kid into college and they don't even get in? No, I can't even imagine having $10 million. Anyway, finally, there's the side door. And this is the door that Rick was holding open. All you gotta do is give him like $300,000, $400,000, and he would guarantee that your kid gets in. If you ask me, these are Black Friday doorbuster prices. So, the side door business was booming. And there's a couple different levels to the scam here. Let me break some of these down. First, Rick would lie on these kids' applications. If they were white, he would put them down as black or Hispanic so they can get affirmative action. <laughs> I'm like, what? Now the real black kids gotta get reaffirmative action? <laughs> what are we doing here? Then he would lie and say these kids played sports that they never played. He was literally photoshopping their heads on real athletes. 
There was a five foot five men's basketball player, a high school cheerleader who was made to look like a lacrosse player. You've never had an issue with this. Like some article comes out that the, the polo team is selling seats into the school for 250 grand. Well, no, because she's a water polo player. But she's not. <laughs> Listen, man, I just report the news. You receive it. And of course, this doesn't work with like football or basketball. So he would just pick those like fancy rich sports that no one checks on. You might be wondering, but Tate, what happens when these kids get to school and they don't know how to fence or play water polo or roll those freaking boats from how high? No, 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 no. They just don't go to practice. Rick had already paid off the coaches, so we're good here. Then there was the ACT and SAT test taking, which I don't even really know why we still take these. But anyway. If the kids weren't smart enough to get the grades that they needed on their own, Rick would coordinate with the parents to hire a private proctor to deliver the exam. But of course he wasn't a real proctor, he was paid off by Rick. How much you ask? Oh, just $75,000 per test. <laughs> what are we doing? Alright, listen to this, this is important. The kids in the room thinking all of this is legit. They're filling out their test answers, but they got a fake Scantron sheet. Nice. They finish the test. They bring it up to this dude. He's like, thank you. Have a nice life. Good luck. He waits till the coast is clear. And then he just brings out the real Scantron and fills out the right answers just enough to get them the highest score that they can possibly get. It's not a bad idea, but <laughs> it's messed up. So the kids get their scores back and they're all hyped thinking they actually did something. It's kind of like when you were growing up and your little cousin wanted to play video games with you, but you didn't want him to mess it all up. So you gave him the controller, but it wasn't plugged in. We all didn't do that. Okay. Anyway, that's the gist of what's going on here. It's been reported that between 2011 and 2018, that Rick Singer made over $25 million. But he was dealing with some real high rollers. One dad paid Rick to get his kid into the school. After the kid got in, the dad invited Rick to his birthday party. But did this rich dude rent out a Dave & Buster's or a country club or a freaking bounce house? No. My guy rented out the Palace of Versailles. Another family paid Rick $100,000 to get their daughters into school pretending that they played volleyball. These kids didn't play volleyball. What family was that, you ask? The creators of Hot Pocket. I don't think my father, the inventor of Toaster Strudel, would be too pleased to hear about this. So the next time you take a bite of a Hot Pocket, just know there's dirty money in there. You better take your talents to Bagel Bites. <laughs> okay. Okay, 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 okay. This is serious. I'm telling y'all, this scandal, it goes deep. But before I wrap up, let me just quickly tell you about this whole Aunt Becky thing. And low-key, it might be one of the craziest ones just because of how unnecessary it all was. Okay, so Aunt Becky's kid's getting ready to go to college. And in case you haven't noticed yet, I'm only going to refer to her as Aunt Becky. Anyway, what's crazy about Aunt Becky's kid is that she's really big on YouTube. No, I mean really big. This kid has like 2 million subscribers. And she was getting brand deals, including a makeup deal with Sephora. And I don't know much about makeup. But I know they sell Rihanna stuff there. Her name's Olivia Jade, and she does a lot of video blogs. And a lot of them are about how much she hated high school. She even told her parents she didn't want to go to college. And why would she? She's probably swimming in YouTube checks. Which reminds me, I want to take a second to thank this video sponsor, Kaplan SAT Prep. When I'm getting ready for college, and my parents ain't rich, I choose Kaplan. But the schools choose the rich kid. I'm just kidding, this video's not sponsored. Still black owned. Anyway, back to Aunt Becky's kid. Olivia Jade's kicking and screaming, talking about how she doesn't want to go to college. But her parents are like, Oh no, you're going to college. Mind you, neither of her parents went to college. So they pay Rick Singer that cool $500,000 and this girl's on the next thing smoking to USC on a cruise scholarship, pretending she's a rower. The only problem is, at her high school, the guidance counselor says she doesn't row. So he snitched. Now we got a documentary. So what's my take? <sighs> like... Let me put it like this. Is this a good documentary? Sure. But is it crazy? No. White people who aren't rich are going to watch this and clutch their pearls and say, oh my God, I can't believe they did this. I'm appalled. And black people are going to watch it and be like, yeah, y'all just realized that they did this? See, now Tiger King, that's the documentary that really shook things up. Anyway, the worst part of this whole documentary, which I don't think gets enough shine, is that there's some kid in the hood right now with straight A's that can't get into a school because one of these rich kids took the spot that they don't even want, and more importantly, don't even deserve. 
It's literally the people that need the least help in life that are cheating to get into these schools, which is mind boggling. The public college system was originally built for people who came home from World War II to get a good education at a fraction of the cost that we pay today. Now the cost of school is through the roof and student loan debt is over $1.6 trillion. I don't even know what that means, but it's crippling us. That means young adults can't buy houses and they can't invest in shit that'll build generational wealth. Colleges make about $500 billion a year and only a fraction of that goes to your actual education. They spend the money on nonsense and not enough on getting kids without access better education. Is the new gym and the new football stadium nice? Yes, of course. But you couldn't think of a better way to spend that money? It's like if you owned a food shelter for the hungry and you spent millions of dollars on new wallpaper. Why don't you just buy more food? This documentary isn't surprising at all, but it doesn't mean it's not frustrating. People have been complaining about affirmative action for decades because it tries to give minorities a chance to get into college, and they're saying everyone should get in on merit. Word. But does anyone complain when these kids have parents who went to a lot of these colleges have a better chance to get in? Hmm? What merit is that? What merit is it that your mom went to Harvard? Does anyone complain that kids who play sports like fencing and crew that aren't even offered at most urban schools have a better chance to get in? No? Okay. Does anyone complain that these kids whose parents can make a large donation to the freaking science building have a better chance to get in? No? Okay. Does anyone realize that research shows that exposure to diverse colleges leads to enhanced critical thinking and problem solving skills? No? Okay. Of course no one cares about that. And so much has been done to try to reverse affirmative action, like the 2014 lawsuit brought by the Students for Fair Admission, which claimed that Harvard was discriminating against Asians getting into their university. Word. Mind you, Asians make up 6% of the United States population and 24% of kids admitted to Harvard. No, it's all right. I just thought we was cool. Rush hour one, rush hour two. The point is, this Aunt Becky college admission scandal is just one of the many issues with the higher education system. I just wonder what the future looks like. Colleges ask you for so much money, but what are you really getting? The value of college is a video for a whole nother day, but a lot of the problem here boils down to the fact that so many kids are fighting for the same spots. There's over 5,000 colleges in the United States, and these kids are all fighting for the same top 10. Crazy thing is, depending on your major, there's research that suggests that going to an elite school doesn't always equate to higher salaries down the line. What school did your boss go to? And then don't even get me started on the pandemic. Like, is your Harvard Zoom class more prestigious? Do you guys get better virtual backgrounds? It's all a mess, but hopefully we get free public colleges and student loan forgiveness sooner than later. I'm gonna give Operation Varsity Blues the college admission scandal three stars. If for nothing else, this documentary is worth it to hear the conversations the parents were having to get their kids into these schools. And even though these undeserving rich kids are taking the spots of deserving non-rich kids, it's hard to really be mad at them. A lot of the time, the kids didn't even know what was going on. So who do we really blame here? Is it the parents for paying to play? Rick Singer for organizing it all? Or the colleges for even allowing it to happen? You guys can be the judge and let me know how you feel about it in the comments below. Operation Varsity Blues is available right now on Netflix. As always, thanks for checking out Taste Take. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like and that subscribe button. In the comments, you can also let me know what school you went to. Special points for the Ivy League of the South. We would never take a bribe like this. I, I know for a fact. All up and up over there at the old swamp. Thanks for the time, y'all. Peace.